Hi everyone, thank you for joining today. Um, hi everyone, thank you for joining today. Um, I'm Chloe and I'm really excited to be moderating the UK Medical Schools panel. Um, for those of you joining uh, Millie for the first time, Millie is a company that we are dedicated to building a global community for international students, um, which is why we host our panels and webinars on tons of different topics every weekend. Um, and if you're interested in any future events we might be hosting, you can look on Instagram or on our LinkedIn for updates about that. Um, so basically, here's how today's panel will look. We have some questions that are prepared already, so we're going to go through those um, for the first 45 minutes or so. And then at the end, there will be sort of 10, 15 minutes for a QA and a um, where you can submit your own questions and um, then we can have our panelists answer them live. And if you wanna give it to a specific panelist, you can just make sure you put their name in the question and I'll make sure to direct it to the right person. Um, yeah, so we'll go ahead and get started with the question. So if all of the panelists could give us sort of a little introduction um, and maybe share the university and the degree that you're currently um, taking. Yeah, of course. Hi everyone, my name is Saima and I'm currently in my second year of graduate entry medicine at the University of Southampton. Hi, I'm Shankri and I'm a first year medicine student. I study at King's College London. Hi, I'm Jenna. I'm a second year medical student at the University of Nottingham. Hello, my name is Beverly and I'm a fourth year medical student at Imperial College London. Thanks everyone. Um, now we'll just sort of go over a few um, questions about how you ended up in med school. So why did you guys decide to um, study medicine or go into med school in the first place? Yeah, so I feel like um, to discuss how I got into medicine, I used to tell you how I didn't do medicine in the first place. So for A-levels, I did biology, chemistry, maths, and further maths. And I just, I loved all four of them. And I didn't want to do a degree that meant that I wouldn't get to do one of them. So I ended up doing natural sciences as an undergraduate at University College London. Um, and then towards the end of that degree, I sort of realized that I didn't want to go into chemistry and maths. Like I didn't see that as being part of my long-term career, but I did really enjoy the biomed aspect. And within biomed, I really enjoyed the sort of more clinical modules. So, you know, the neuroscience, um, more looking at the conditions. And so I started looking into masters and other opportunities that would sort of be to do with that. And then that's when I stumbled upon graduate entry medicine, which, and I'm not sure how familiar everyone is with the UK system, but essentially there are the undergraduate medical degrees, which are either five or six years for people coming directly from A-levels. And then there's the graduate entry medicine program, which is four years long. And that's for people who have already done an undergraduate degree. So I saw that that was a potential option. And um, I started looking into work experience and volunteering and things like that in the clinical setting in hospitals, found that I really, really enjoyed that. And I didn't necessarily want to work in labs and things with the biomed stuff. So yeah, I guess I decided to apply and the rest is history. <laughs> For me, I think the main thing that made me choose medicine was the career itself. So I did a job shadowing and I could envision myself there. So um, unlike most people, I didn't exactly enjoy biology when I was doing, I did IV by the way. So I didn't enjoy it because it was so much of theory and I wasn't much comfortable with it. But then once I went and I saw the profession itself, I could envision myself being there and I really liked it. And I knew that ultimately it's the end goal that matters. And this was something that would bring me there. And so that's why I chose med. I chose medicine always because I really, really wanted to go into a career that works with people. Um, and at the moment, it's a lot of science. And obviously, I really enjoy science. And it was something that I was always better at. But it was, it's again, like Sakari said, it's what I want to go into in the future. I want to go and help people. Um, but I was, I find it really hard to decide. So I decided really late that I wanted to do medicine. Um, so I had to do a lot of the preparation quite late. But I'm so glad I did because there's nowhere else I'd rather be right now. 
Um, I think my reason is a bit um, similar to Jenna's as well. So I really wanted to go into something where I would continue to talk to people. And during my IB, I really loved psychology um, and like that aspect of my education. Um, and when I was looking into things that I could do um, after the IB, I was really um, leaning for leaning more towards like healthcare and things like that. Um, just because I love the combination that it had with like psychology, um, like behavior and like um, the science behind it. So the biology, the chemistry. Um, so yeah, I thought that medicine would be the best way that I could combine everything. Um, and then I went into um, my, like my work experiences so that I would be able to gain more um, of an understanding of the career as well. Um, so that I would like understand if it was a good fit for me. Um, but yeah. Thanks everyone. Um, maybe now if you could share why you chose the specific university you're at or kind of maybe how you got there. Um, yeah, so we'll just go ahead. Yeah, so for me, I originally had thought that I wanted to live at home for my second degree. So because my family were in Southampton at the time, it just sort of made sense to apply to that university. So um, the entry requirements for Southampton is you need to have done the UCAT before. Uh, so that's what I went ahead and did. And then ironically, my family left Southampton. So um, I started looking into other universities that also required the UCAT. So that was, I think, um, King's as well in London and Bart's in London as well. So I ended up applying to those three. And then when it got to interviews and things like that, I went back to Southampton for the interview and just loved the campus. I loved the way they sort of spoke about the course. And I think they pride themselves on this sort of like spiral curriculum, which is just um, that you come back to the same ideas again and again throughout your sort of four years, which I thought would really complement my own learning style and really sort of reinforce things in a way that would work for me. So I guess, yeah, the combination of all that was meant that I ended up with a Hampton. I think even for me, the learning style was the most thing I gave priority to, because especially for undergrad med, there were multiple learning styles. and. If I'm not wrong, that's one thing called problem-based learning, case-based learning. But then I was more used to traditional learning, which is just reading lectures first, then going to a clinical scenario and then practicing. And it just seemed that would give me, like, uh, I felt more confident doing it because I didn't want to just go to a clinical scenario without knowing anything. I just didn't think I'd be comfortable with it. And that's how I shortlisted my options. And yeah, that's it. Um, for me, as mentioned before, I also did the UCAT. Um, which is the admission test you need to get into some medical schools. I didn't want to do the other one. I didn't want to do the BMAT because I wanted to focus and do well on the other one. Um, but because I decided to do it quite late, my score wasn't as good as everyone else. So I applied to unis. I didn't look at the UCAT score first and look at what you need to apply with the UCAT. So I applied for Birmingham, Edinburgh, Bristol and Nottingham. And I only got an interview at Nottingham and then got into Nottingham. Um, so it wasn't really a choice thing, but I'm really glad I ended up here because it's a really, really good course, a really good university. We get real body dissections, so they're called cadavers, um, and it's a really good mix of learning. So I'm really glad I did end up here. Um, yeah, for me, I think the main thing that I wanted to do was like move away from home. So I knew that I wanted to study in London. So I just had to like um, break it down from there a bit. Um, and then when I was looking at the universities, I realised that the ones that I was really like mainly interested in were the BMAT universities. So um, I only just did the BMAT, um, which was a bit risky just because less universities do that one. But um, I guess it worked out in the end. But um, yeah, so I only did the BMAT um, and I really liked Imperial because it had like a range of um, teaching styles. So even though um, in my year it was mostly like traditional, they did do a bit of like case-based learnings and like team-based team -based learnings as well. Um, so I knew that I, I kind of needed a push um, in my education and I thought that Imperial would be able to give me that. Thanks guys. Um, maybe now it's already been mentioned a little bit, I think, but if we could kind of go over the sort of tests you had to do, or maybe if you did any internships or, you know, anything sort of leading up to getting into your course that really helped, um, if you could share that. Yeah, so I think um, the most important thing for a lot of us, it sounds like, was sort of those entrance tests. So traditionally, it tends to either be the UCAT or the BMAT. I personally did the UCAT, which is an aptitude test, and it's sort of split into different domains. You have verbal reasoning, quantitative reasoning, situational judgment, all those kinds of things. And it's a lot less to do with the science and a lot more to do with like aptitude side of things. 
Um, so I did that and it, it was okay. It's not too bad. There are sort of quite a lot of, um, there are quite a lot of websites that are quite good for it now. I think I used Medify and just got a subscription for a month. And that really, really helped with like practice questions and things. In terms of other things, I think it's probably really important for your personal statement and things to do as much work experience and shadowing as you can. It's just really helpful to be able to reflect on the experience and show the university a certain level of commitment. Um, and also just for yourself to be able to work out whether you enjoy the environment or not. So for me, I did um, some, I shadowed an anaesthetist for a while and also a histopathologist. And yeah, I found both of those really helpful just to see if I enjoyed the environment and just to be able to reflect on for interviews and personal statements. Even I really think work experience is important, especially for medicine, because it's a long term commitment and you wouldn't want to get into something if you don't know what it is. So uh, but I was also in the COVID batch. So when I exactly started my 11th grade, that's when COVID happened. So I couldn't exactly get proper. I was lucky. I job shadowed a gynecologist for a few days, but I also know that's not entirely possible now. But then during my batch, they released a lot of virtual job shadowing courses online. And I did quite a few of those and they stimulate the exact way a GP works in the UK. So you get more or less the same experience. So I think people should check that out too. And that helped me a lot. Even in my interview, there were a few questions based on that. And it was so nice because you no longer have to go away and uh, actually go to a hospital and do it. They gave equal priority to this. So that's something that helped me a lot. I think something that I really wanted to do when I was applying was rule out other careers because medicine is so long and you have to be really in it. I wanted to rule out everything else as well. So I did a lot of like food, like I worked at M&S in the head office for a bit. I shadowed someone at dietetics in Great Ormond Street and then I did a GP visit and I did a hospital visit um, and I really felt obliged to go th follow the medicine route. Like, I wasn't even so sure, but I saw um, a C-section, a cesarean section, and it really, like, showed me what I want to do in the future. So I think you have to throw yourself in it, and then you can know for sure that that's what you want to do. Um, yeah, for me, I found it a bit difficult to um, find work experience in like hospitals and GPs. So I still wanted to try and do some kind of health related um, like experience um, just so I can understand the kind of like the area. Um, so I did go to like um, hospices um, and like pharmacies to do like my work experience just so I can see like the different areas that I guess medicine and health towards patients could like involve um, and then I also did um, like summer schools as well and um, this wasn't even related to medicine I think it was in biochemistry so like just again to see the different aspects that I could um, like maybe see myself in um, and yeah I did the BMAT as well so um, that involved me doing a lot of practice I think I did like loads of past papers from like a little book a textbook um and then that was like how I prepped for that as well um but yeah I just tried to do as much um reading around the topic as possible so even if I didn't explicitly look at the um I don't know the day in the life of a doctor um I did try to look at like maybe TED talks or um like books around different aspects of medicine um just to see what kind of interested me thanks guys um so we'll switch to a little bit of a more focus on your actual course now so if you could share your favorite and then maybe the most challenging or I guess your least favorite part of the course Yeah, so I guess to start off with the favourite part, for me personally, that's definitely been clinical placements. I think um, up until this point, I'd just been so used to learning from books and lectures and things like that. So to go from that to being able to learn from an actual patient is such a different experience and one that I found a lot more rewarding and a lot more enjoyable. Um, so, for example, we're always sort of taught that heart attacks are going to feel like a weight on your chest or like an elephant on your chest. And reading that in a book versus hearing it directly from a patient is two completely different experiences. And I found that that really helped me stay engaged and learn a lot better because you tend to remember those patients a lot more. Um, so that's definitely been the highlight for me. And then in terms of most challenging, I think, again, quite a few people seem to share this sentiment, I think, is that 
you kind of go from a lot of medics tend to go from being the sort of high flyers and top of the class kind of thing to go into a situation where everyone is a high flyer and everyone is top of their class and so when you're in a group together sometimes that can be a little bit daunting and you can feel a little bit like maybe you don't belong as much as other people do almost sort of the imposter syndrome but what I found is that actually that's that's totally normal and everyone everyone feels that way and it's just sort of understanding that everyone's going to have their strengths and weaknesses but ultimately you're kind of all in it together and you can all sort of help yourselves out with that with that sort of thing um yes yeah, so i think that's there's a mine i think for me the most favorite part i haven't had clinical placements yet but then we have sessions in which we learn the clinical skills like how to measure vp and all those and that just makes it so much more real because when you're starting from textbooks you still have this vision in your head that you're going to be a doctor someday but then it doesn't make it real but when you're practicing it you know that one day you're going to be doing this to someone and so that's something i really love and for something I don't really like would be the content, especially because I was in IB and I came here. All my high school biology was covered within two to three lectures. And that was it. And so it was just so much of information put into it. And initially, it was hard to understand as well, because you just have so much of information loaded and you wouldn't exactly know how to start studying just by lectures and all. But it gets better. It definitely gets better as you learn the skill and how to study. Yeah. Um, my favourite part is also quite similar, it's putting what you know into clinical context. So we've started doing problem-based learning, which we talked about earlier, um, and it's really amazing to see all your information is used for something. Like, it's a lot of science is thrown at you, and you don't really know where you're going with it, but once you see it in a context, it really, really helps. Um, and also, very similar, to, very similar to Seema, the most challenging part is the competitivity of it. So everyone... It wants to achieve the top marks and it's hard to believe in yourself when everyone else around you feels like they're so much better um, and I'm also exam period at the moment so everyone's working really really hard um, and there's so much content to learn but it will be worth it in the end and yeah it, if you work hard you will achieve what you want to achieve. Um, I think for me my favorite thing about the course so far would be like my current year. So right now I'm interpolating um, and I'm doing humanities philosophy and law. Um, so I think this year I've been able to kind of like focus on the medical ethics side um, of medicine. And so everything in um, the course is very medicine related. So everything can be applicable to like my next few years. So um, I've really enjoyed kind of looking at the patient in a lot of detail, I guess this year. Um, and yeah, just because I do find the content really hard to just like get in my brain and um, sometimes so it's just nice to look at medicine and more um, like humanities like aspect um and I would say the most challenging thing um about the course um would have been maybe like my third year so that was the year where we had our placement so even though I did really enjoy um applying the knowledge into like real life situations um we just had a lot of content to go through so we were more in charge of our own learning and we had to be more um I guess proactive with it just because um we would have to cover some of our teaching ourselves if that makes sense um but yeah that would be it for me thanks guys um so if you could share maybe a sort of day in your life so the type of hours you might be studying or you know doing these placements or your sort of workload um, or just anything related to how your typical day might look? Yeah, so if I talk about sort of a day on placement, um, depending on whether you're in medicine or surgery or things, um, it tends to be sort of eight till five, which I know sounds a little bit scary, but that can definitely vary day to day. So some days you might leave at two or three, um, or if you see an interesting case, you might stay till six. And then we tend to have some teaching sort of once a week from five till six by some of the junior doctors. Again, it's optional, but it sort of can be quite helpful to consolidate some of the, the themes that you've seen during the week. Um, but definitely that's that's very, very variable. And you can sort of pick and choose a little bit what you want to go to and what times you want to spend doing self-study. Um, yeah, so I think that's that's my current my current timetable. Uh, for me, I don't have placements yet, but then uh, most of my lectures were also online, especially because of COVID. So they just upload a lot of lectures in the day. So I just try to split it up into blocks because I have a very short span of attention. So I try to do like two lectures in the morning, two in the afternoons, and usually I'm done by the evening though. It's not a lot. And I keep the weekends free as well. Yeah. 
Um, so I was really lucky that we were able to have in-person lectures this year. We didn't last year. Um, but it usually starts at 9am, which isn't too bad because it's very different to school, which is a lot earlier. Um, and have can have any from one to five lectures a day. So latest finish would be around 5pm um, with lots of breaks in between. Um, however, attendance isn't marked. So if you like need to catch up or something, then you don't have to go to lectures. You can catch up from that in the end. Um, once a week we'll have something like clinical skills which was mentioned before and that's just basically learning how to do practical things like taking blood pressure performing a cardiovascular exam things like that um but there's like a really common myth in medicine that you don't you don't have time to do anything else you only have to work but there is a lot of free time as well depending on how you organize your workload Um, I think for me right now, I'm kind of like working on my dissertation. So a lot of the time that I have, it's all self like dictated. Um, so I don't have like an official timetable. Um, but before we started um, writing um, our work up, we did have maybe about, I guess, four to five hours of like lectures within a day. Um, so this would be like a mix mixture of like class discussions, workshops and things like that. Um, and a lot of um, like downtime as well because this year fortunately for us we don't have any exams which we all love so um yeah it's kind of just um a lot of like class dis discussions which I really enjoy thanks guys um so we'll switch so obviously you're all still students but we'll switch to like a career sort of um path so maybe if you could share what your maybe plans are for after you finish school if they're tentative that's fine but just any sort of yeah path you might be going i think for me this sort of change on, changes on a pretty much weekly basis every every week i'm on a different place but really enjoy it and just decide that's what i want to do but so currently um again i'm not sure how familiar everyone is with the uk system but in general once you graduate you do two years of foundation year training so that will be your fy1 and fy2 and then a lot of people tend to take a break at that point for FY3 because it's kind of a natural um, break in the career. So people tend to either locum during that time or they tend to take holidays or do whatever they want to do. And then after that, start specialty training. So at the moment, I'm currently thinking I'm, I really enjoyed cardiology. So I'm thinking of potentially going down that route. Um, so if I did, then I'd have to do my two years foundation training and then do another eight years um, to become a cardiac consultant. But as I say, this changes pretty much weekly. So we'll, we'll see what I want to be next week. I really don't think I'm fit to answer this question because I just started uni and five years is a long time ahead. But I, I, am, I envision myself just working as a doctor, hopefully, if I like it. And but yeah, I'm open to other stuff as well because this is more of me just exploring as well. I have a very open mind towards what I want to go into. So as same as I said, there's the foundation years. Um, so I'm going to use that as an opportunity to try different specialities and get to know what my interests are. But like every day I learn about something new. I learn that there's a whole new speciality. So I haven't got a big interest in pediatrics or psychiatry. Um, but I don't know if that will change in the future um, and also in the UK it works so you apply to a location as well so I'm also hoping not to be too far from home because I'm from London so it'd be nice to be in that area as well um, but I do definitely want to work in a hospital I think rather than a GP practice. Um, yeah for me as well I I am not really set on anything yet um, but I'm but so far, I've really enjoyed my um, like GP practice um, and I've also really enjoyed um, psychiatry so far. So right now we haven't had too much um, psychiatry placements. We'll be having that in the next few like months. Um, but from like the learning and the things that I have been exposed to, I'm really interested in that. So um, but yeah, I'm very, very open to anything at this point. Thanks, guys. So um, if you could share, you talked a little bit about the foundation years, but if you could share maybe when do you really have to sort of make that decision of sort of where you're going um, and then maybe how you will end up coming to that decision, if you know, if you don't know, that's obviously fine. But yeah. I think that's one of the good things about medicine is that you can change your mind at almost any point in time. I remember for my GP placement, pretty much everyone there used to be on a surgical training program. So they were all going to do completely different things, decided a couple of years in they didn't like it and just switched to GP training. 
So I feel like that's one of the good things is the flexibility. Um, so yeah, you can kind of make that decision at any point. It's just whenever you want to start your training program. So it would be after F2, essentially. So after your second year post-graduating, -gra post um, at any point then you could decide and then apply for the training program you're interested in. And I think personally, how I'm going to try and work it out is sort of similar to what other people were saying that during your foundation years, you can pick sort of which specialties you want to work in. And so my plan is to just pack it with everything that seems remotely interesting to me. And then through spending a little bit more time on each block, see which one I like the most. And then if I still don't know, there is the opportunity during sort of that F3 year between things to just spend a little bit more time just working in a set department to see if that's something I could see myself doing long term? Uh, for me, I'm not really sure as well. But then uh, I think once I go into placements, I'll have more exposure to the different fields. And that would give me more clarity on what I like and what I don't. And even if that doesn't help, there are usually a lot of webinars conducted. And a lot of doctors you can approach and talk, especially during the placements. I had a few seniors tell me how they could talk to the doctors to know exactly how their lives are and what they like and they don't like. And you can compare based on that and make a decision. So that's what I'll be hoping to do as well. So my course in Nottingham is five years, but next year we start to go into the clinical phases of it. So I'll do my dissertation next year, which is an academic research project. Um, and my eyes could be open, I could want to go into academic research. Um, but after that, we'll go into clinical phases for two and a half years, and then the foundation years, and then the speciality training. Um, so at the end of the five years, you apply for locations rather than specialities. Um, but we are only just hearing about this sort of thing now. So I'm just leaving the science part of the course. Yeah, I think I'm a bit similar. I'm just going to use my um, like placement opportunities and my foundation years to really understand what I enjoy um, and really just ask um, others about their experiences as well um, and just make sure that um, the path that I choose is like right for me. So um, yeah, just using the opportunities that I'm given um, to really assess which is the best, um, yeah. Thanks guys. Um... So if you could share what you think is a really important characteristic or maybe personality trait, I guess, for someone um, who wants to go into med school or maybe already in med school would be really important for them to have in order to be successful. I sort of, yeah, I've been thinking about this one a lot. I think from my perspective, there isn't really one. I feel like we seem to have sort of cultivated this sentiment that the ideal doctor looks a certain way, acts a certain way, has this specific characteristic personality type. But I think one of the things I've realized a lot spending time in the hospital now is just that there is such a variety um, in the sort of types of doctors there are. Some are more shy, some are more outgoing, some are more extroverted. And I don't think any of those things has had a bearing on the quality of care that they've provided. I just think, you know, ultimately looking at the UK, there's a population of what, like 67 million people. And each one of them is going to require healthcare during their life, probably. And they're from all walks of life, cultures, communities. And I think their healthcare providers should reflect that. So I don't think that there is a specific characteristic, but as long as you're sort of trying your best to provide the best quality of care for your patients, then I think you'll be fine. Oh. To me, I, I don't think there's one specific characteristic, but the one thing I think I developed at least while coming here was to be open-minded because you're new to everything, especially if you're leaving home. So I'm not from London originally. So when you leave home and you're coming here, you're going to be exposed to different cultures and just anatomy in general, that's new dissections. You're going to meet different people, the learnings, everything's going to be different. So I think you should be open-minded because not everything is going to work out initially. At least the first few days are going to be hard. You might even fail, but that's fine. So if you're open-minded enough to accept it, I think it will be worth it towards the end. It's not a characteristic, but it's just easier if you're open-minded. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I just think the most important thing is you have to believe in yourself. You're going to have a lot of setbacks. Medical school is not easy. Um, you're going to spend your time comparing yourself to others. But if you persevere and if you know what your end goal is, you know you want to do everything you can to get there, then do whatever it takes. And as long as you believe in yourself and who you are and what you're fighting for, then it'll be worth it in the end. Um, I would say for me, it's like really important to be a good listener. Um, so like throughout the course, I have like had so many opportunities for um, people to give me 
constructive criticism, um, whether it's about um, how I like talk to patients or how I do like a presentation and things like that. So, and I think particularly in medicine, you really do need to be, um, like you said, open and ready to kind of adjust the way that you approach things. Um, so like whether it's in terms of like talking to your patients or even talking to your colleagues. So just like listening to others around you um, because they may know things that you haven't even like thought of. So I'm um, just being really um, open to like learning and like gaining these new experiences is really important, I think, as a medical student. Um, okay, thanks guys. Um, so the next question we'll sort of focus on would be more related to the application process to med school. So if you could give one application tip um, or maybe something that you kind of wish you would have known when you were applying to somebody who wants to apply, what would you what would you say to them? I think my biggest tip would just be do as much work experience in a hospital as you physically can. More so even for yourself than for the application. I feel like, you know, medicine is such a long, um, long career that you kind of owe it to yourself to, you know, put yourself in the best position to make, you know, the best decision for yourself. So as much work experience as you can, trying to work out if you enjoy the hospital environment but then also that's really really useful for personal statements and interviews and things so um a lot of the times they want to see that you're empathetic you've been part of a team all these kinds of things and you need evidence to back that up and so i think having work experience and volunteering just in any capacity is really really helpful to show that uh, i think one tip i would give is at least for me i didn't have a lot of extracurriculars but then i was strong in my academics so there's this common perception that you have to be good in every single thing and you have to be an all-rounder but that doesn't work for everyone so you don't have to focus on doing everything just focus what you're good at what you like and you could always use it to your advantage because the doctors or the your interviewers they're open they know that a person is not perfect not everyone likes everything so if you can just put forward what you like and if you talk with passion i think that helps a lot yeah, I also definitely think you need to apply to your strength. So like I said before, I did my UCAT exam quite late. So I the best thing to do would be apply to unis that don't look at the UCAT too strongly. And things that you do well in, so I do well in interviews, use universities that look more into interviews rather than anything else. Um, but utilise your resources. So I was really lucky my school was really helpful. So I got a lot of access there. But if you know medical students, you now will have access to us, speak to them, get as much information as you can so that you can make informed choices. Um, I would say, um, like, make sure you do a lot of research um, because the course is very long and um, you need to make sure it is something that you want to do. Um, so whether this research is in, like, reading books and like um, autobiographies, biographies of like other doctors, or um, I don't know, talking to medical students about their experiences, going to like open days for these universities. Just make sure you try and be really proactive with how you, with when you're applying, um, just because you don't want to, I guess, regret your decision at any point. Um, and you just want to make sure that the university is like the perfect match for you so um whether it's in terms of like the teaching or um like the placements that they give you later on all of this information um should be able you should be able to like access and um, before you're even applying so um yeah i'll definitely say like do as much research as you can and like definitely like bombard people with questions because i think that's something that i really should have done a bit more um, thanks, guys. So just a note to the students that are watching, if you want to put your questions in the Q&A, we can start going over them um, fairly soon. Um, but for the panelists, if you could go back in time um, and give yourself, your high school self, one piece of advice that you kind of know now, but maybe didn't know then, what would you say to your, your past self? I think mine would probably be pick what you enjoy at that point in time rather than what you think you should be enjoying. Um, I feel like it means that even if you don't reach your final destination in the quickest possible route, you kind of enjoy every step of the way and there's definitely something to be said for that. I feel like applying to medical school, everyone kind of makes you feel that you need to be doing all of these other things like extracurriculars and stuff like that, that you might not necessarily enjoy, but just be a future self. But actually, I think if you end up doing the things that you enjoy, if it's sport or anything like that, you can bring that in um, and if anything, talking about it with so much passion will only be a good thing for you. 
Yeah, I definitely agree. But the one thing I would tell myself would be like, it's okay, it will take time, but it's okay. Because all of us are just so, especially when you're fresh uh, in school and you know you're going to go to university, this common perception that you have to be good at everything, you have to go to uni immediately and all. But I think gap years are great and you should do what works for you. And sometimes it might just take more time and that's totally fine. Yeah, 100%. Also, I am a strong believer in everything happens for a reason. So if you get rejected from something, it, there's a reason for it. You're going to face a lot of hurdles, a lot of setbacks, but that your end goal, you'll get there if you're meant to get there. So just make sure that you don't take anything personally. Like it's all just part of the process. It's all just one long path. Um. Yeah, I think mine would definitely be to like believe in yourself Um. and to like just give myself a bit more credit um, because I think during the application process you can be very like hard on yourself and very 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 stressed um, just because there is a lot of like, aspects that needs to be done um, within a medical like application um, but like Jenna said make like everything does happen for a reason um, and just yeah just it's important to have faith in yourself I think that's the important thing and just to make sure that um, your happiness is one of like the paramount things as well. Thanks, guys. I think that was all really good pieces of advice. Um, but we'll kind of switch back um, to a little bit more about your specific schools now, I think, because we didn't cover that in a ton of detail. Um, so if there's one thing that you would say is the best thing about your school and you think that other people would love it as well, what would be that um, piece about your school? Um, I think for Southampton, this is kind of specific to the uh, graduate programme, I think. We do what's called um, graduate groups on a Monday and a Friday, and you're kind of in a group of eight, and on the Monday you'll discuss a clinical case that's relevant to the theme of that week. So for example, if diabetes is the theme of the week, you'll discuss a diabetic case, and then you'll have learning objectives, split them up between you, and then all present something relevant to that learning objective on the Friday. And I think that that was really helpful for a lot of us because I think we realized that as I was mentioning earlier everyone has their strengths and weaknesses so it kind of cultivated that collaborative learning um, which is really helpful and also really helped in terms of presenting publicly obviously it's only to another seven people but it was really good practice to then go on and improve public speaking and just being able to present um, on a weekly basis really helped with confidence and things like that so I quite enjoyed that and I think it was a sort of more fun way to learn potentially than lectures can be sometimes thing that's great about kinks is we don't exactly start with dissections we start with something called prosections so you're not exactly cutting open a cadaver initially itself you're just seeing it and learning it first and I think that warms you up to dissections because dissections can be a shock to many of us it was a shock to me itself like from what I saw in videos and all it was so much more different in real life so they just made sure the transition was easier on us as well and that's amazing yeah Nottingham has a really individual course so it's only a five-year course but you come out with two degrees in the end so we have our first part of the course which is our like scientific course that's all the content and then we do a dissertation at the end and then the course splits halfway through year three um, and then you do clinical placement which gives you your medicine degree um, but a lot of other unis do an indicated degree which takes another year additionally so it'd be a six-year course but we fit it all in in five and you come out with the same two degrees you get in the end and that whole dissertation thing gives you a really good opportunity to look into an area you're interested in, go into it in a lot of depth. Um, but at the same time, I'll still get to do all my clinical placements um, and still come out at the end with what everyone else would have had in the six years. Um, I think at, at Imperial, we had um, something in our first year called our first clinical attachment. Um, and then this is where we were like able to follow a patient with like a chronic condition, um, like over like several weeks. So like we would go to their homes or really get to know them, look at how they're like managed in like the hospital with their GP and things like that. And I just like really, really enjoyed um, that experience just because I was able to talk to this patient and really understand how their experiences of like the NHS has been and what we could do more to support them and 
it was just I think this was like my first ever like patient interaction as well so I was very very nervous but um like I'll always I'll always remember like this one patient um just because like she taught me so much about um how to look at um the people I talk to and what to be considering and how like interactions with your doctor can if that affects you for like years on and yeah just that just the impact that a doctor has on a patient life as well um so I really really enjoyed that at Imperial. Thanks guys um so we'll kind of stick to the the school questions I guess but um I think a few people mentioned that they did some lectures online and everything but if you guys maybe could go a little bit more in depth about the format of your lectures or classes um maybe for those of you that did the school po before COVID, maybe you could mention how that was as well, because hopefully maybe school will kind of go back to that in a few years time. But yeah, if you guys could just share that. Yeah, so for me, I sort of started in COVID times as well, sadly. And it was actually, it was very strange because on my course, there are, I think 48 of us, and um, we were literally split up right from the, from the start into two groups. So we didn't really meet half of the course until like a year, a year and a half in, which was very strange. Um, but yeah, so we had our sort of graduate groups in person, but then a lot of the lectures were online and they were either recorded or they were live streamed. And to be honest, I think I almost preferred that because I found that sometimes, especially with the more challenging topics or ones where the lecturers speak incredibly fast, um, it's just useful to be able to go back to the recording and play it at you know pause it whenever you want to take notes as you want to and um sort of choose when you want to do the lectures as well i think um it was also mentioned earlier i think sankara mentioned it that you sort of you can pick when in the day you're feeling the most motivated to do your lecture rather than being bound to going to a 9 a.m you can pick to do it at whatever time you feel like you'll get the most out of it i think that, that was actually quite rewarding um and then i think after that things started switching a bit more to in person um yeah and so now my lectures are a lot more in person when they do happen and yeah in general they've been they've been okay although I do slightly slightly miss the recordings uh for me all my lectures this entire year has been online so uh but then we just meet up every once or twice a week for clinicals or just for tutorial groups and so in our tutorials we have worksheets in which we can discuss or we can just bring up certain topics we aren't really sure about and the professors would clarify it for us, or we could just go through it with our tutorial groups. But then uh, the lectures online was actually really helpful for me because I have a very short attention span, so I can just take breaks whenever I want to, and you can speed it up, or you can even get the transcript sometimes if you're more of a reader than visually learning it. And even before my exams, I had the chance to revisit most of the topics because all of it was online and I could just pay attention and just make notes whenever I wanted or clarify it. So it was more based on, I would say it's more self-learning thing, but it's just more convenient this way in terms of learning. I've been able to experience both. So my whole first year was online and now everything's in person. So the benefits of everything being in person has really like motivated me to go to lectures. And it's also been amazing to meet a lot of people. So a lot of our lectures and things like that are done in different groups. So I've been able to re meet an array, array of people. Um, but things like clinical skills when they were online if you're learning how to do an exam in your own bedroom with no one around you it doesn't really help so it's been really really helpful to actually get out there and do things practically um but it is just really good to get back in it's a lot more social and you can have the opportunity to ask questions to people around you and you learn a lot more than just sat in your room Um, yeah, so for me, my first two years were um, in person um, and then my third year was the one that was like impacted um, by the pandemic, but then that was also my placement year, so I still had to go in no matter what. Um, so then my fourth year, so this one, it's kind of like a mixture, so some things were online at the beginning um, and then now we're just mainly in person. So I don't think I was too impacted um, in terms of um, my teaching, um, but I would definitely say when I did have online um, lectures, I didn't like them at all. Um, I would really just disengage so easily um, just because I knew that no one around me was kind of like working. I would just be in my room looking at a screen. I was just feeling so tired. Um, so 
even though for some things I did enjoy it so like when we had maybe guest lecturers who are like I don't know in another country maybe and I think that was really beneficial um but I really did enjoy um like learning with my peers or doing things in person doing like examinations in person um so yeah I'm just I'm glad that things are getting back to normal um yeah Thanks guys, it was interesting to hear sort of both online and in-person um, aspects of it. But um, moving to another question, if there was something that surprised you about med school in general, or even just about university in general as well, it doesn't even have to be specific to med school, um, what would it be? Or maybe something you didn't expect going into it? Um, yeah, I think, uh it's a bit of a difficult one. Um, I think for me, it was probably just how individualistic things are. Um, it's a lot more self-directed at university, at, sorry, at school and at college. You're very much so, you know, people are tracking your attendance and you're fed information a lot more. Whereas you realise so much more when you get to university that if you don't put in the work and if you don't go over topics that you find difficult, um, no one's going to chase you up on that. And so it is very much so self-directed. And I think there's sort of pros and cons to that, but it means that it's definitely if you don't motivate yourself, then there won't be anyone else to do that for you. So you definitely have to make sure that you're on top of things and you're sort of organised and you can manage your time well. Yeah, I totally agree with that because I don't know why I expected you need to be like an extension of school. I assume you'll have classrooms, teachers teaching us, but none of it happened. So you will have to learn everything by yourself. You're held accountable for your own learning. You can clarify, uh, there will be people to help you, but not exactly to guide you. They won't be all along with you through the way. You have to just find your way. You have to make the decisions yourself. You will have to prioritize your time. So you're just held accountable for everything you did, which is a lot of responsibility. But I guess it just is what it is. Yeah, 100%. It is very on your back to do what you want to do. Um, school was very planned out for you so you go to school in the morning you do your lessons you come home you do your homework you've got a lot to think about at university you don't just have your degree to think about but you need to make friends you need to socialize with the people around you you want to have a social life as well you want to go out you want to do extracurricular activities there's just a lot going on so you have to balance your own time and that's a lot to deal with but as long as you balance it so that you're prioritizing what you want to prioritize and get your work done um, then so far it's going okay um i'd say um since like medicine is like very competitive to get into i thought that same environment would be there once i'm actually there um and everyone would be like man like everyone for themselves and very um like almost like a hostile kind of environment but um when i actually got in like the community at like my at my university was just so strong and very inviting um and like i just like really really enjoyed that um and there's just so much support for like each other and things like that and it kind of encourages you to keep going because there can be like times in the year where you do get really stressed and really down but um like just talking with like my friends or like other like academic societies that give me support in that area that I'm really struggling in it really just motivates you to keep going and which is what I really like about medicine like we're at, we're at, I can't even speak it's like um like medics are their own like little community um and they just like keep on supporting each other which I really love Thanks everyone. Um, maybe now we'll go over some misconceptions about med school. So, you know, I'm sure everybody knows of the one that there's no time for anything, nobody sleeps, but if there's any other misconceptions or um, maybe stereotypes that you guys have come across, um, <coughs> sorry, um, that you can now say, well, that's not true. Um, could you share that and your experiences with that? Um, I think... I think you're right. A big one tends to be that there's no time for anything. Um, everyone always works. They do nothing else. All medics talk about is medicine. And I think, yeah, that's definitely, definitely not true. Sort of what I was mentioning earlier, that you need to have really good time management. But if you do, you can do whatever you'd like. Um, and you don't have to make sure that all of your extracurriculars are medicine. You can do a sport. You can do whatever else you might be interested in. Um, and that's just as good. I feel like work-life balance is so, so important with medicine that if anything, picking up a sport or picking up another extracurricular is arguably just as important as spending your time in the library. 
um yes I'd say yeah I think that was the main one that just you can have more to your life than just a med medical degree I think a common assumption I came across at least a lot of things my family and friends told me was once you enter medicine your life is sorted which is not exactly true because that's when your life actually starts because it's a totally new course and you have to build everything so your life isn't sorted but then you have a better sense of direction definitely because at least for people doing medicine you have considered the fact that you want to be a doctor and so you know exactly where you're heading towards it's not just a trial and error thing but your life isn't sorted because there's so many other things as well Sometimes my friends get really confused because I live the exact same life as they do when they're not doing medical courses. So I will still go on the nights out that they go out on. I'll still do all the extra acti extracurricular activities. I don't, I'm not going to university to stick my head in a book. I'm going to live the university experience, but I'll still come out with the same thing that everyone else is coming out with, with the medicine degree. So I just think it's really important to not focus purely on the course but to do what you enjoy, because if you're just focusing on the course, at the end of the day, you're not going to look back and regret what you've done in the past. So just live every day. As, like a bit cringe, but live every day as if it was your last. <laughs> um, yeah, I 100% agree. Um, I think it's really important to have like a work-life balance um, because, I don't know, just for me personally, I can... I don't think that academics would be able to sustain me throughout my whole um, time at like for six years. Um, so I do think it's really important to like make friends, really go out um, to those events, to those societies and really engage with the university life. And I feel like um, medics can definitely do that. Um, and if they don't, it's usually because they don't want to or maybe it's a bit harder for them. Um, but I definitely think you can like, manage um like both your work and your life um at university as a medical student thanks guys i think i just noticed that there was a question in the q a um about how much free time that med students have a day and i feel like we we answered that pretty well um but for that student who asked that if you want us to follow up go ahead and put that in the chat and we can um so thanks for going over that everyone um <clears throat> if you guys could maybe share sort of one last maybe piece of advice that you would give, because obviously the students watching are high school students. Um, so one piece of advice you would give to them before they start their med school journey, what would that be? I think mine at this point is just me saying the same thing again and again, but it would just be um, try and put yourself in a position where you are making the best decision for yourself and pick up experiences to try and help with that rather than just for your application. So I think do as much work experience. I honestly think do as much work experience or volunteering in a hospital as you possibly can, just so you can, you know, put yourself in the best position to make that decision for yourself. Because as we've all been saying, medicine is very long. If you're doing the degree, it's sort of like six years, you've got this almost like lifelong commitment to learning. So you need to know that this is something that you can do long term and will enjoy or at least you know you think you will enjoy so I do think do as much work experience get as much exposure do as much research as you can just so you know when you're applying that this is truly something that you want and not just something that you know you think you might enjoy yeah that's really important uh, the advice I would give is to just keep going because at times you might feel like you're not getting into it or you wouldn't or medicine might just seem too competitive and too hard but then if you really want to do it I think you shouldn't stop just keep going and just do your thing it will take time but then it will work out eventually if you put in the time and effort and just do what you want to do. I totally agree I'd also say that we've said it quite a lot but medicine is quite competitive and the people you're around always try to compare yourself to others and I just make sure it doesn't matter what everyone else gets it doesn't matter what marks they achieve as long as I'm passing as long as I'm doing well enough to get me to the next stage of my course to the next stage of my career it doesn't matter what everyone else is getting obviously you're clever enough to get into medicine so why aren't you clever enough compared to everyone else yeah um i would say it's really important to like 
do things that make you happy and not to do medicine because like someone else is telling you that you should um and just making sure that you understand what like medicine involves because you'll be putting in a lot of like hard work and like dedication before you get into medical school you'll be putting in that same hard work and dedication during medical school and that will even continue after you graduate for like years after so just like really make sure that you do your research and you know that this is something that you do want and even if you don't know what speciality you want to do that's completely fine just um know whether medicine as a general field is something that you want to do um so i think we have time for maybe two or three more questions but um if you could share do you guys think there are any advantages to going to medical school in comparison to other degrees um if yes what are they and why if not that's fine um but yeah um i think they're probably more traditionally anyway there is the pro of that there is always going to be a job at the end of it like we are always going to need doctors and that's never really going to change again i guess how the government is dealing with that at present is a little bit different but overall i'd say people are always going to need doctors so you do have some some semblance of job stability in that sense i think the main advantage is if you're doing especially if you're doing what you want to do and you chose medicine it's so worth it because it's a career which is so hard but it's so rewarding because once you're at the end line you know what all you did to get there and you know how much effort you put in so that just makes it so much more worth the experience i think to a degree medicine is just like every other course like going to medical school is the same as just going to university in the fact that if you don't want to do medicine then there's no point in doing a medical degree if you want to go into a career to become a doctor rather than do medicine it does open a lot of doors for you so even if you don't want to become a doctor or work in a hospital go be a, become a gp you can have an academic career it's a really really good degree to have and to back you for a lot of a lot of jobs um but if you're not interested in it then there's not much point yeah um i think with medicine it gives you so many um like transferable skills as well um so we have to engage with patients we have to like do a lot of research and so there's just so many aspects and like domains that make up medicine and I feel like you can almost use that within um, like almost any um, other degree or any other area. So it may be a bit more difficult to like apply them, but you'll definitely have that like foundation that you can then use um, later on. So um, I definitely think like medicine is just um, unique in a way um, just because it, there's so many things that make it up. Um, but I think it's just like very, very versatile in some ways. Thanks, guys. So um, we have time to kind of touch, I think, on that student's question. Um, I thought of something that maybe they'd be interested in hearing. So if you could share your favorite um, extracurricular you've done or maybe even a module that's not related to med school, so something different that you've had the opportunity to do, what, what would that be? I think for me personally, it's sort of what I found quite rewarding was um, spending some time with so I went back to my old college and was able to do that during my sort of second year the start of my second year and just being able to spend a little bit of time with them and discuss future prospects with them kind of I guess similar to what Millie does I guess um it's a lot of that I think a lot of us can appreciate that it can be quite difficult to get into medicine or to get into university in general so being able to spend some time with them and just discuss potential future career prospects and things like that has been quite enjoyable quite rewarding um yes yeah, so quite that's been quite good Uh, I think for me, uh, everything has been good actually till now, like the entire experience of university and all. And yeah. I was a very like proactive person at school. So I was really worried at uni that I wasn't, wouldn't be able to show like my leadership skills, things like that. But I was really lucky. I was able to be like, um, chair of my accommodation hall last year and I'm able to be in committees for charities here. So there's like a charity called Make a Smile where we take, people into hospitals dressed as Disney characters to see patients and people who like have learning difficulties things like that and um, so I was able to be on the committee for that this year being a treasurer so I've just like to throw my hand into things that I won't get to try anywhere else. 
Um, yeah, I think I'm a bit similar. I did try to engage with like my clubs and societies as much as possible. Um, so like in my earlier years, I did um, like a bit of netball. Um, and then I'm like currently kind of part of my like, choir and like cultural society as well. So I just wanted to um, engage with things that were just not medicine because sometimes you do just need a break. Um, and yeah, and in those things, I do also get like get involved in outreach as well because I just like giving back as well um which I'm sure like loads of medical students enjoy doing um so yeah I would say keep on engaging with your extracurricular activities just because like they don't have to stop when you um start medical school thanks guys well we're kind of coming to the the end of our time today but thank you so much um to our panelists I think this was a great panel um and we had a ton of really good insight um, for the students who are watching and who are hoping to go to med school one day. Um, so thank you for being open and honest and sharing all of your experiences. Um, and thank you to the students who came today. Um, we really appreciate you watching and we hope that you were able to get some really helpful information from this. Um, and if you do need help when it comes to university, um, the panelists LinkedIn's are in the chat. So if you wanted to message them, you can, or you can always reach out to Millie um, and we help with everything to do with university admissions. So Millie is here. Um, and then also you can check our website and our Instagram for all of our future events and everything like that. Um, but with that, that said, thank you so much to our panelists. Um, and we really appreciate your time today. Bye everybody.